Hi, welcome back. This is Two Cherries Instruments. Uh, we build musical instruments the modern way with Fusion 360, CAD, CAM, CNC, all that really fun stuff. Really any technology we can get our hands on to make this process more accurate, repeatable, and fun. So, um, this is where we left off last time. Um, this is the uh, Guarneri del Gesù Vieton violin. Um, and uh, we, we made this mold. We made it out of a really nice piece of, uh, of walnut. And it looks fantastic. Um, I wouldn't say that you need to use a nice hardwood for your mold. But if you happen to have a piece laying around the shop like I did, then uh, go for it. Because it looks great. And uh, um, so I've been getting a lot of comments or a few comments about... Um, modeling the top and backs for these instru for this instrument and uh um those are on instagram and facebook if uh you don't follow me on instagram and facebook please uh go ahead and do that the links are right down here below me and uh and while you're at it click on that subscription button okay um so let's bring up that top model and show you what I ended up with um, it looks really great I really I really like it so let's get rid of the mold here and let's bring in the top so so the contours ended up super smooth um, this is the best that I've done this to date so um, I get better and better at this process the more I do it it's not parametric it's not your typical CAD work um, it's more of uh, an artistic way of trying to approximate something parametric <laughs> so now the outline is still that parametric outline that we drew um that's proportional and parametric and it's um really interesting so um as far as these contours go um i use a process where i create a face for the top and a face for the bottom and then i extrude a face through them uh, on that on the sides that we've drawn that profile with and then i um, cut and stitch trim and stitch all of those together which creates the solid so um, let's go ahead and uh, start on that and uh, here we go okay so we're gonna need two profiles in order to start um, in order to start uh, sculpting the shape so I have this outline here which is my top outline that we went through in the first video and uh, then I also have this um, outline of the uh, this contour of the top arch so this is created in the same way. It's just two circles. You can see there's a circle of center point there, a circle of a center point over here, and a tangent line between the two of them. Now, the contour won't rigidly follow this. We're going to use this to approximate the shape, but uh, the continuity of the surface is going to pull this away from it constantly. So we're going to try to get close to this, but it's not an absolute, but it's just, you know, all of these lines are just here for reference. So let's get into it. Um, first, I'm going to get this origin out of the way. So we're going to create, we're going to go into the sculpt environment here. We're going to create a face on the XY plane. So I'm, I like to make overlapping surfaces. So here I'm just, um, so I'm starting outside the profile, and I'm just going to get the basic face that we're going to start working from here. So that's the basic shape. Um, then I'm going to I'm going to clean this up a little bit. Um, I already know we're going to need. Um, some more faces in this area so because that uh, recurve where it dips down and comes back up so I'm going to insert some more edges like that we'll move those around a little bit so it doesn't matter as much where it is and then um, since this body is um, the same on both sides. I'm going to, it's symmetric, so I'm going to mirror duplicate this across this plane right there. And if they overlap, it will merge, so we're good there. Um, the next thing I want to do is I want to create a crease. And I apologize, these 
this menu keeps popping up on my other screen, so you may or may not be able to see that. But what I'm doing is I'm going, I'm using the crease tool here. I'm going to add a crease to this right here. So now we can start modifying this shape. So what first I want to do is I want to follow this contour here. So I'm going to do this. So if, if you drag from left to right down, it will select only things inside the box. So what I'm doing when I do that is so see I find the surface right there and I select it and it's it's gonna select both of those lines across the face. It's just a, a nice easy workaround. So that way I can stay in this view and uh, continue working to get this into the shape I want to. Now I'm gonna move over to the top view here. I'm going to select this line here. I'm going to angle it and pull it out a little bit. So from here, if I hold the Alt key and drag, it'll pull out another face. So I just hold the Alt key down, and I drag on another face, and I adjust the angle. Then I keep doing that all the way around. So once I've done that, then I want to go back and select each one of these lines and kind of realign it to that outdoor contour. So that creased edge that we created, we're going to put right on that outside contour. So I'm going to put a few extra faces. I'm going to make these faces a little bit narrower here because I'm going to be pulling some extra um, out of them as they uh, as they come into this area so I want to want to line up here I'm actually going to insert another edge here So now I'm going to pull this face out like this. I'm going to do the same thing here. Move this one out a little bit. Maybe even this one out a little bit like that. I'll even pull this one down here. That's what I'm looking for right there. So now we've got this one. Now I'm going to do, I'm going to create another face on the same plane, but I'm going to do it up here.
So now we're going to merge edge again to merge these two together. There we go. Now we're merged together pretty well. So the next thing I'm going to do is start drawing, pulling this out from the center. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use our modify tool again here. I'm just going to select these two, pull down the alt again, and start pulling out squares again. So you can, and you can vary the width of it by moving it back and forth here. Okay, now we've got that. I'm going to merge edge again. So I'm going to, this one, I'm going to go merge edge. And I'm going to merge that with this other one. Okay, there we go. And now a lot of times I like to just, sometimes, I mean, you can always, if you don't like something, you can always go back and try it again. But, um, so a lot of times I'll just bring this edge down a little bit to already start that curve out. So I was on the wrong tool there. Okay, merge edge. So I'm just going to select some faces here and then I want the faces that kind of match up pretty closely parallel to them. On the other side, merge those together and it gives you a nice continuity, um, some pretty good continuity. So. We'll just select a few more. Okay, and then we have a basic surface. It's a little bit rough in places, um, so you can go around and start smoothing this out. There's one. There's a couple tools that um, are really useful here, though. Um, there is a smooth tool, so we can do modify smooth. We can select, well, select the entire shape, and then you can smooth it. Um, sometimes this gives you, you know, varied, <laughs> it doesn't work ex exactly as you would like it to do, so, so, um, you might use that. I've also noticed that, um, this continuity has pulled out my surfaces, so, so I like to go back and kind of pull these up into place a little bit closer again. Now the other tool that I like to use is the um, interpolate. Well, oops. The interpolate tool. So you take this one, and you can do it to the surface points, and then that really smooths things out. And that gives that's where I got that really smooth contour from. Was that? Now it's going to pull you off of your reference lines a little bit. So I'm just barely off here. I think that's acceptable. Um, because it's what it's doing is it's pulling it into continuity, um, and that's really what I want. So um, the the issue is that it has pulled it off of my outline. So I'm going to have to go back and and uh, modify these lines to get that back into place. Okay, and just to keep this not uh, an epically long video, um, so that's your, your basic shape right there. So um, you could finish form and go into some other things, but to, to make this a little bit easier for me, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a copy of this body. So there's my cop copy right there. And then I'm going to move that down by a tenth of an inch. 
So um, I'm going to get rid of that top one. So this is going to form the inside surface. So we don't need those recurves on the inside surface, and we need some flat spots for the end blocks and corner blocks. So I'm going to bring back the sketch of the mold that has the corner blocks in it. Go to the top, and then we're going to use the flatten tool. So the flatten gives you these, these points here, and all I'm going to do is just go through and select the points that I want flat areas in. So obviously I need the recurve flat um, for the ribs to glue to, and I need the block areas flat. So um, it's still symmetric across sides, so we just have to work around this one side. Okay, so you may think that I've gone a little bit excessive here in these corner areas since these corner blocks are going to be carved out farther than that, but um, I'm actually going to, I'm, I'm not trying to carve the top in exactly the way it's going to be with the CNC machine. I'm going to be doing some handwork on this. Um, the whole point is just to get my accuracy and repeatability up. So I've gone a little bit outside here, but once I have the actual ribs to lay on this inside surface, then I'll rework that a little bit by hand. So, so that's what I'm going for here. So now we have nice flat surfaces there. Um, so I have my top and back. So we'll finish form. And that gives us these surfaces. Let me get rid of this. We're going to go into the patch environment here. Um, don't need that arch anymore. So I'm going to hide both of these and then I'm going to extrude this outside edge up. I'm going to do it as an offset plane. So now I've got this rim here and I've got the top and the bottom. Now to stitch these surfaces all into one solid body what we're gonna have to use is the trim tool first. So first we're gonna do trim and we're going to select that rim shape as the, and then we're gonna cut this one and this one. Then we're gonna do it again. We're gonna use this face to cut the rim on the top. And we'll do that for the bottom again. Now we have the faces. Um, the only thing we have to do is join those together, so we'll just stitch all three of those together. So we got these three selected. And if you just keep an eye on these three bodies right here, we have three faces. And when we hit OK, they'll all combine into one solid body. So there we have it. Um, it's pretty smooth. It's not as smooth as the one that I ended up doing because um, I was trying to keep this a little bit shorter for you. but you just keep working that you can actually get a really nice smooth surface and a, a really nice looking contour so um, up next we're gonna be um, cutting out the, the bending jigs for bending the ribs on this and uh, then we're gonna be doing a little bit of testing I've got a few things I'm gonna work on with this top and uh, so thanks for watching please like and subscribe and